You access the social marketing module by clicking on the icon for social marketing up on the top left. Then on, on the top right, you will see the sub options for blog entries, articles, newsletters, contest entries, and then contest setup. Again, you may not see all of these icons depending on the authorization that you have and the, what has been installed on your website. For junior version 4, these are the five options that are underneath social marketing. Let's start with our orientation of the blog entry system. What we're going to find here is that the blog entries, the articles, and the newsletters are very similar, starting in the blog entries. This screen shows you a listing of all of the blog entries that have been put into the system. And this will grow depending on how many you have entered. And the newest one will always show at the top of the list. The oldest will always show at the bottom. Orientation of the top, we have a link here for add new blog entry. We have a link for edit blog paragraphs, blog images. We then have a link for view edit blog sets edit autoresponder settings which does not highlight when you hover over it and then show all blog entries you can also search through the blogs if you're looking for a particular one you can you can type it into this search box up on the top click search and it will display it down below when you first get started in the blogs module what you should do is change your autoresponder settings and that is by clicking on this link for edit autoresponder settings you will see the page expands and shows you more information here. What you should do is change the email address that is going to be to and from where the autoresponder will appear, change your domain name, uh, whatever is appropriate, and then put in a message and then click on the save button. You also have the ability to change whether or not you want comments to be active on your website and if you want to approve those comments beforehand. This last setting here for blog create page, this is only seen by the people who administer the website and who are actually doing the programming. The blog system has the ability to divide all of the blogs into individual sets. The sets are used to display different sorting options or display options on the public side of the website. Although the system does have the ability to enter keywords, sets are a little more dynamic than simply adding keywords onto your blog entries and a set can be used to change where blogs will show up so in the blog sets if I wanted to I could come in here and create a set called create a set called diamond education and then I could have any blog entry tagged as Diamond Education showing up in that area of my website under Diamond Education. I could create another one called Gemstone Education and have that show up only in the Gemstone Education section of the website. This allows you to disperse your blog entries around your website instead of just having one centralized location where blog entries would appear. Similar to the site content area, we have a section for blog images. This looks almost identical to the image screen underneath site content. The blog entry system has its own database of images. This way you can load images into, into your, your blog entries that will not be seen in the rest of your website. And likewise, you will not get burdened with all of the content images that you've have loaded into your site that will clutter up your blog system. To add a new blog entry you go into this link add new blog entry. This gives you a blank form to fill in your new blog entry. Our blog entry system has grown with several different features than what you may find on WordPress or other blogging systems. The creation date always shows when the blog was created. You can have things visible or not visible. You also have the ability to set which one of your membership levels can see a particular blog entry. 
uh, the posting date, the posting time, email, the title, uh, ability to have your URL uh, stay static even though you may change your title. This blog entry box looks very similar to what you have seen in the content entry system. Down here is where you, ha you have the ability to enter your tags for a particular post and to view existing tags you click on the view existing tags link and this shows you all of the previous tags or keywords if you'd like to call them those that have been entered into the system and then our blog sets appear down here which again is how you could make these display around your website on different pages other than just simply in the blog system. Internal linking is available where you have the ability to pick and choose links between other pages on your site. This area down here is where you'd select your blog images to be entered into the blog entry. This has the same functionality as, as what you've seen on the content system where you simply check which drop down you want to select an image from and then click the update and redisplay to have it inserted into the form. You can also grab product layouts if you wanted to change one of your blog entries to be a product page. And then every single blog entry has the ability to have a customized autoresponder. This form down here allows you to set the to and from emails for the autoresponder, the autoresponder message, and the thank you once the customer posts a comment. You also have the ability to set a secret registration number which if you mention the registration number in the blog entry then you'll be able to have a sp this specific registration thank you message in and autoresponder be sent out. And then down here just like the rest of the system whenever you see the cyan colored background those are search engine optimization settings. And here you have the ability to set your own meta description your robot tag, your author tag, and your Google, your Google tag. On the bottom corner is where the red delete button is if you ever want to delete this blog post. I'm going to cancel and return. Now a funny thing about the blog entry system is anytime you actually click the new uh, blog entry link it does create a blank blog and those blank blog entries show up down here. They all say invalid date. So any one of these you could either delete them or you could, would go into them and actually use them. Let's take a look at what, what one of these looks like once it's been filled in. This is a blog entry that was posted on March 20, uh, 27, 2011. It says the hottest trends, stacking diamond wedding bands. And then it has the blog entry in here. If you'd like, you can always switch to editor mode. and that will show you what this blog entry looks like when, when viewed in editor mode this is what your customers would see on the public side I'm going to switch back to classic edit mode by clicking the classic edit mode button and then cancel and return to bring you back the post link that you see in this column this will jump you right to the blog entry page so you can see it on the public side. And here it is. Let's move on to the articles, which is very similar to the blog entry. And you see the layout is, is the same. The only difference between the blog entry screen and the article screen is simply that the articles icon up on the top is colorized it says post article up on the top instead of post blog and then you see the word article around instead of blog let's quickly go through here so you can see how the, the system is identical I'm going to first go into the autoresponder settings and you see that we have similar settings in here with the to and from email settings the subject and the autoresponder message and whether or not you can approve comments before posting. The article section at the moment does not have the ability to turn comments off. In other words, to close comments. Let me show you what it looks like to go into our article images and 
This is what the screen looks like when we do not have any images loaded. This is the same screen that you previously saw in the blog entry system as well as the content system. You can load images into the article system that you would only access then through the articles. Again, the reason for this is we divided all of the, the image storage areas for the content, the blog, the articles, and the newsletters into separate directories simply so that one system would not clutter up another. Articles also has another way to divide and organize called article topics. Those article topics would be added by clicking on this article topics link. Similar to how you would add an article set. The sets are in here. The topics are here. Please refer to the training for the articles module for an in-depth discussion as to how to use the article topics and article sets. Let's now take a look at what the screen looks like when you click on add new article. This screen for adding the article is extremely similar to the blog entry screen with two notable differences. You can actually choose an article date to have a different year. In the blog entry system, it only allowed you to choose a four digit year instead of having a option for 18, 19, or 20, and then any year from zero through 99. This hints as to the reasons why we have a different blog entry system versus an article system. The article system is conceived of as a place where you would go in and you would backdate previous articles. These could have been newspaper entries, they could have been magazine entries, they could have been articles or white papers that were written many, many years ago, and you want to archive them on your website in an organized way so that people can reference them. So this allows you through the article system to go in and backdate these articles. Scrolling down you see here we have where you'd select your article main topic as well as your article set. And of course you do have the same field for selecting your tag or keyword. Scrolling down a little further you see that you still have the same options for picking your images the snap-ins and the product layouts and then continuing to scroll down we have the ability to modify a specific autoresponder if they leave a comment for this article and then there's registration numbers that can be used uh, within this specific article as well and lastly at the bottom you see in the cyan color the search engine settings scrolling back to the top I'm going to click cancel and return and you see how it comes up with invalid date here again that was because every single time you click an add new article or likewise an add new blog it always creates a blank entry and then you can go, always go back in and edit that entry moving on now to the newsletters section clicking on the newsletter module up on the top the newsletters section is conceived of as the place where you will go on and archive the regular newsletter messages you send out to your customers. Those newsletters could be the emails you send out on a monthly basis, they could be printed newsletters that you convert into images and then want to archive here, they could be printed newsletters that you take the text and then archive them on your website. In either case, a newsletter section of your website is designed to tell customers that these are the newsletters you send out on a regular basis. Unlike the blog entries, which can be a modern day rambling of different topics, the newsletters is specific for your regular customer correspondences that you would directly send out. Again, the article section is meant to be educational and an archival method for previous news, magazine, or published works that you want to put out there that are of a more educational nature. Let's take a quick look at the settings for the newsletters. Again, they will be very similar to the articles and blogs. Let's start with the edit autoresponder settings. And you will see in here, we see the same settings that we saw under the articles. You have the ability to approve the comments before, before posting, but you don't yet have the ability to 
close the comments. You also have the ability to change your notification emails to and from for the autoresponder, the autoresponder subject line, the autoresponder message, and then the screen message. The newsletters also has the ability for topics and sets, and the newsletters has its own image system. Again, similar screen to what we've now seen in the site content, blog entries, and articles. I'm going to click on the invalid date here to bring us into a newsletter that was previously populated in here. And you can see that the creation date of this was a couple of years ago. We have all of our similar settings, we have the visible, the different membership registration levels if you have the system set up for membership. The newsletter date only shows the month, the, the day, and the year, so the, you only would choose the uh, four digit year here. The time that the newsletter is, was posted, the author's name, email, title, again the option to save the current URL if you're changing the title. The edit newsletter entry box here with all of our quick links on the side. And also as seen previously we have a place where you can enter your tags your newsletter main topics and your newsletter sets. You can choose internal linking if you want to create quick links between the pages of your site. Choose your your images to drop into the newsletter and then again you have your autoresponder settings, your special registration number settings, and then of course at the bottom we have our search engine settings. Scrolling back to the top. As a test, I'm going to show you one extra feature that the newsletter system has that the blog and entries actually do not have. I'm going to change the visible on this to, to yes and call this a test, test newsletter. I'm going to click the update button and it shows us now that our newsletter date is dated today. It is the visible visibility is set to yes and we now have a newsletter link here which is before this is blank and if you click on this test newsletter link that now shows up and you can see we have a, our newsletter that we entered. We have our title test newsletter. We have our testing one, two, three that we entered and it shows the typical things that you'd normally see on a blog system which is the date that it was entered, the uh, a link to access the permalink, you have related topics that would show up if you have the topics uh, turned on, uh, tags or keywords that would show up if you have those entered and down here at the bottom is where someone can post a comment. Back in our stand, we have two other links here, one that says grab code and one that says print. I'm going to try the, the one that says print first. This one here brings you up a completely clean with a white background uh, page. It removes the design of your website and only shows you the newsletter. The reason this feature is here is because you can actually use the junior system to compose your entire newsletter, lay it out with all of your images, and then come to this screen and print it or save it as a PDF. And you would do that in case you want to print it to have it on your counter or to send through the mail. So this now becomes a single system where you can compose your newsletter, have it appear any way you'd like, and then use this to actually create your final printed newsletter that you would mail out. The other link here that says grab code, this is a special link that doesn't necessarily work on the demo website, but I will show you another way that this works. What this does is it brings up the newsletter and you see that the ability to leave comments is all missing. This is the blank slate we give you, so you can have your programmer come in here and customize this so that this screen will display all of the code necessary 
so you can grab it and paste it directly into your email program. Programs like Constant Contact, MailChimp, iContact, AWeber, or a host of others. I have an example here. This is what we use to send out the daily golden nuggets through the Julie Website Advisory Group, otherwise known as JWAG. This screen shows a large text box which has been formatted for all of the HTML code that is necessary to send out through GoDaddy's email system. So on a daily basis we would come in here, we simply highlight all of this and copy it and paste it into our email program. And then to assist further, there is another version down here which, which doesn't have any HTML and this is what we copy and paste into the section for the text version of our emails. So again, this is completely customizable and it would be done by your programmer. And that covers all the topics for the newsletter section. Let's move on now into our contest entry section. I'm going to start by clicking on the contest setup icon, which is the last one on the top right. This brings up an incredibly diverse screen that was designed to allow you to create a very, very flexible online contest. There are many fields here which can be turned on or off depending on if you want them to show up on your contest entry screen, descriptions of what your contest would be, different fields that you have the option to customize with default labels shown on the left, and whether or not you want them turned on or off on the contest form, and whether or not you want them to be set as required or not. The contest system has the ability to ask for many different types of fields depending on what you are uh, what you're requiring for your contest and it even allows you to ask for a secondary address if you'd like. Again each, each one of these fields are completely customizable to your needs. Contest entries can be in the form of either uploading images as it says here there are options for three images one here second image, third image. People can also upload links to videos, video one, video two, video three, or you can have them enter essays about themselves, or which are referred to here as write-ups. The contest module is not something that is typically turned on on a website. It is something that needs to be set up because there's a lot of work that goes into this. As you can see, this is something you can learn how to use, but it will require that your support representative guide you through it or set it up for you. Now let's take a quick look at, at one example contest entry. Under contest entry, this one's been populated in here for quite some time. All of the contest entries would show up on, on this screen. and We're going to click on number one there for this first contest entry. And it shows the name of the contest was called Spokesmodel and it was back in this demo was done back in November of 2008. We have the ability to come in here and put some uh, comments after we review the contest entry and then down here is all of the information that the contestant entered. The images would show up in this area here they are shown here as broken images. Those are the locations where the images would show up. There's a bunch of gibberish here, but this is where the essay would show up if, if you were requiring a, a story or an essay. And in the video, you see the word down here of a video. If a video entry was done, it would appear in this area. The concept behind the contest system is that when you run a contest on your website, instead of running it through a social network like Google Plus or Facebook, you will drive traffic to your website. People who enter into a contest will have a contest page that appears on a public side. And if one of your requirements is that that contest page be liked or plus one, then you would be driving traffic to your website instead of driving traffic to Facebook and Google+. Okay, that concludes the social marketing module. Let's now move on to the accounts module.